Okay, continuing on Luke with Taleb and uh, ideas from Anti-Fragile, I think incredibly relevant for learning, education, and career. His recipe for innovation. I like, He is very, very happy to call people out. So he, he says, this is his, not mine. He says... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially the academic manifests just like an academic he manifests just he like an academic <laughs> but not in in writing style in the way he speaks i guess not his actual ideas according to taleb innovation does not come from academia does not come from the sciences he calls it the soviet harvard delusion <laughs> doesn't come from formal education which i can definitely resonate he argues it's entrepreneurship especially knowing our collective failures. He says that we should have a World Entrepreneurship Day to honor all the failed entrepreneurs. I think I'd be, I'd definitely be marching in that parade. Definitely more failed than successful at this point. <laughs> and I, I can definitely see that as well, especially from the stuff I've tried with real estate, even with things within the blog podcast, constant student that haven't worked. Like those failures are like eternally useful. They're actually more useful than successes for learning. So it creates the opportunity to navigate things better in the future right but also he he says that if you wrote a book about failure even though failure is more useful uh a success story still sells way better and obviously it's because people are really buying stories they don't really buy things out of logic we we all fit into stories but that's a bit of an aside point on his recipe for innovation i don't know if it's the best way to look at things myself as these fully discrete separate entities like as, as tempting as it is for me to kind of bash academia and science too, because I do, I know, I'm, I'm kind of skeptic about how, yeah, how kind of, how deep people, how much stock people place in both of those. Like I, I do, I do like to question that. Because I think it's too simple to just like <laughs> criticize them like that and say innovation. But I'm sure he um, doesn't mean it as absolutely as that. I actually would say, you can apply an entrepreneurial spirit entrepreneurial spirit to academia and science just as you can to business projects for example like you can you can you can approach it with the right attitude because i i feel like what he's really referring to is that the cultures in a lot of those disciplines are unproductive and and one of the ideas we'll come to is careerism he he talks about which that'll make that point clearer another element i think is again randomness randomness and i think that's why he's so big on entrepreneurship because entrepreneurship is really throwing entrepreneurs are really throwing themselves at randomness much more than any other part of society he lists all these accidental discoveries which i i I thought this is fascinating I, i admit i haven't dug deeper but he says chemotherapy was an accidental discovery. It came from a US ship carrying mustard gas off the coast of Barry, bombed by Germans in 1942, and that helped as observed effects on those on board the ship with liquid cancers. But it was illegal due to the Geneva Convention, so it was hidden from the records by Winston Churchill and others. Fascinating. The therapeutic revolution in the post-war years. James Lafanu noted that the change at this time was brought about by doctors recognizing that random... Randomly, chemistry would deliver results. So I think that's referring to basically therapy and running therapies of various forms. Coca-Cola apparently began as a pharmaceutical product. Tiffany & Co. started as a stationery store. I know, Luke, you buy lots of Tiffany & Co. It's it's jewelry, if anyone hasn't heard of it. Breakfast at Tiffany's. Raytheon first made missile systems. Sorry, they made the first missile systems. I hadn't heard of this company before, but they started in refrigerators. I'd love to see how a company went from refrigerators to missile systems. Nokia began as a paper mill. That's that's baffling. A- Avon, the I think they're the door to door perfume sales or perfume salesman. They started in door to door book sales. And another one he doesn't mention is a very prominent tech company, Slack. Slack is like communication, especially for workplaces and stuff, communication app. They started as a gaming company and actually just spun out their, the, the thing they were using they built to communicate with one another. They built that out and started asking friends if they wanted to use it and stuff and it turned into one of the fastest growing companies of all time, completely by accident. So I think, obviously, what's the takeaway, right? It's crazy to think how big a role randomness plays in the way things work. Right? It just fosters a new perspective. 
Like take lots of shots, be in the right positions and don't be obsessed with the, the story of your brilliance was my takeaway. Going back, trying to make clear the point I made around like being entrepreneurial, even no matter what you're doing, rather than um, <laughs> saying no, innovation doesn't happen in academia and sciences. I think even the concept of, we call it classical conditioning now, it's a psychological phenomenon. Like if I ring a bell, and always bring you food. well they found it with pavlov dogs pavlov's dogs right where they would the experimenter coming in the dogs would salivate because they associated the experimenter with food and so they they learned this association but obviously it was, it was like because the experimenter was just associated with food and that study which has become like a very base uh, principle in psychology that was actually an accidental finding. I don't think that's what the study was about. So it's kind of like the whole nature of experimentation it just has so much randomness that again, I think our, our main narrative is always about like control. Because again, what you were saying before, it's always so true, Luke. Like everyone is looking for the beeline to like success station. And the reality is like so many people you look up to thinking, how the hell did Tiffany and Co become so big? How do I make a company like Slack? This randomness is a huge part. Yeah, absolutely. What I was thinking is, imagine if you took all of these companies and you you decided to put the executives in the room and they all write a sophisticated yeah. business plan. Those business, all of those business plans would be obviously yeah, exactly. complete failures. And if they if they just gave up saying, oh, it's not working to plan, we, we shouldn't continue on this journey, then they never would have even exactly. come I mean, about. You then, you then you think, all right, well, I'm interested in entrepreneurship or I'm vaguely interested in being someone who's an innovator. What do I follow then if it's random? And I think the actual key is, I'll keep coming back to this for this because it's, it's one of the big takeaways of Taleb's ideas, is you got to keep firing shots. You got to keep opening doors. You got to keep an open mind. Like you need to be willing. You need to be willing to actually see the possibilities, and notice things. And that's when you talked to before about when you're just like trying to control for some outcome, and it just really narrows your creativity because you put these blinkers on. It's almost like do anything except that. <laughs> hmm. So how do you think? <laughs> Because it's a little bit of a double-edged sword in the sense that everything's random, so you can't tell you can't tell what's going to happen. So how do you optimize for a quote-unquote good outcome, like having a clear why, or you've got to have something to point to yeah. in order to keep going and iterate, and you've got to yeah. have a strong this reason. This is almost for me the whole compass versus map conversation, isn't it? And so what uh, I yes. mean is that you know the direction to go in, you just don't necessarily know the whole path. And that's basically, that's basically it. Like I haven't just chosen, <laughs> I'll give you a good example. Doing real estate was quite random for me because it was basically like I was looking for something else to do other than work at a bank and the family was in real estate. And so the opportunity presented itself and I was like, well, this is the best opportunity on my plate right now. Problem is I wasn't really intrinsically interested in it. And then also the people I was meant to be doing it with soon left the business leaving me like so solely responsible. So, you know, that's, that's when that was a bit too random. So it's probably, it's probably not, not talking about that doing things that way. Whereas I guess current direction, applying the learnings from that experience for me is, all right, I've been thinking about education for a long time, right? I've been more interested in self-awareness. I know that writing, spending more time writing is something I want to do. So then you get to a place where you're like, all right, that's the direction I want to go in, all right? That is where things are really at. And I think that that just makes it a whole lot easier because now you're, now you're focused, at least you know that if the risk is low if you're actually interested, right? If you're interested in the process. Yeah. But you say, say any of those journeys, obviously I go on the journey and I, I know that, we'll talk about this in a couple of sections time, in a couple of days time. You know, that, you know that you'll come up with something good, right? 
if you start a book. But I don't know exactly what the book will look like at the start. So you, you, you can be sure, you can, be, you can control the process, the creative process that yields good results. You just don't get to know what those results are at the start. Like you, I know that if I continue, put it this way, I know if I continue doing quite entrepreneurial stuff, I'll get other opportunities, like likely investing in companies and stuff like that, right? But I don't know exactly what those companies will be right now. All right, I don't know what industry they'll be yeah. in, but, but you and I both be sure that there will be those opportunities. Mm. So what you do get, you get a higher, yeah, and I'm going to talk about this in a bit, in a couple episodes time, you get a higher degree of certainty over the overall picture rather than the specifics and the details. And that's the thing. If you go into innovation areas and you continue there and you apply yourself and you stay at it, you know that something's going to come of it, but you don't know exactly what it is yet because you haven't gone there. And I don't know if it's quite a, if it's necessarily a paradox, but I think that's, this is the nature of randomness. You're controlling. It's this way I think Taleb's useful. You're understanding the dynamics and then, because you're aware of them, then you can navigate them. Yeah, so you'd be less, if you have a good reason to step in into a certain thing or follow a certain direction, because you can appreciate and understand that a lot of it's going to be random and you can take these smaller risks, you're going to be less reluctant to find the perfect path and maybe you'll make that step sooner exactly, rather than later. what people will naturally seek is like the certainty of like if i go into this i know that i'm gonna whatever earn this much money in this amount of time frame and i'll be you know i'll be at this point by this time and what actually gets a lot of people over the line is they're naive about those things it's actually what makes entrepreneurship work like it always takes longer than they thought. Like Elon Musk was like, oh, we'll have the first rockets up. We'll be on Mars by 2005 or something. And it's like takes an extra 10 years or something or, or it's ongoing. And so that's like a, that's a big part of it. But it's, it's, it's being able to deal with just a certain level of uncertainty and understanding that the certainty is actually the opportunity. And you can't necessarily decouple them. What you can do is kind of, control for them a bit but you can't fully obliterate them and that's that's very to live it's like when you try to obliterate it that's when you start kind of screwing yourself over yeah <laughs>